Hello, my dear students and the rest of the learners. Welcome to this presentation in which we are going to learn about the emerging trends in ICT. My name is Meme JM, or you can simply call me Emily Swap. In this topic, we shall look at the identification of the emerging trends in ICT, the challenges and opportunities in emerging trends, and then we shall look at the coping mechanisms or how you can cope with the emerging trends in ICT. Let's commence with the identification of emerging trends. Information technology is one of the most rapidly changing and dynamic aspects of the business world. Due to the fact that information technology is ever changing, the organizations must keep abreast of the changing technology through being prepared to embrace the emerging technologies and in an innovative manner that they can be effectively and efficiently applied without resistance from the stakeholders. Therefore, for transformation, if they have to remain competitive in this era of technological transformation. So there are various emerging trends in the field of ICT today, and that will continue, and that will continue happening due to the expansion and growth of the digital technologies capabilities thus affecting all the sectors. These emerging technologies can be grouped into four categories. Number one are emerging technologies for all the senses. These include applications that incorporate one or more of the following features, three-dimensional images, media, or virtual reality. Number two, are emerging technologies for the internet explosion. These include electronic cache and communication through the internet, such as internet telephony amongst others. Number three, are emerging technologies for the wireless revolution. These include smartphones, global positioning systems, wireless local area networks, amongst others. Number four, are emerging technologies for personal life. These include intelligent home appliances or what we call smart technologies and smart cans. These technologies will definitely make personal life easier and more exciting. The following are therefore some specific examples of the emerging trends in ICT and ethics. Number one, is rapid evolution in computer hardware and software. On the capability, physical size, price, software, and software, the following are going to be the main features of what is expected. Number one, they will have operating systems that will handle real-time data analysis and object-oriented. Number two, they will have improved user interfaces that offer users easier and more intuitive access to information. Number three, they will have multimedia applications that will be fully incorporated into some information systems because data will be easier to interpret when presented as a combination of sight, sound, and emotion. Number four, they will have reduced in physical size and the cost of the components will also be low, but they will be smart devices. So there will be reduction in physical size and the cost of components, which still will be smart devices. Number five, computer, computers will be more intelligent, being able to learn in the environment and understand human voice, response, ETC. Number six, most of the peripheral devices will be wireless or hot pluggable plug and play. That is, you just plug the on your PC or a personal computer and it's configured automatically without opening the system unit to add any new hardware. Number two are enhanced application of artificial intelligence. 
This is a branch of computer science that is concerned with the development of machines that emulate human-like qualities, such as learning, reasoning, communicating, seeing, and hearing. It attempts to develop computer systems that can mimic or simulate human thought, processes, and actions. The main application areas of artificial intelligence or our expectations in the future, of course, starting from current, in relation to the application areas of artificial intelligence include expert systems, natural language processing, artificial neural networks, computer vision, and robotics or perception systems. Let's look at based systems. This is software designed to make a computer operate at the level of a human expert in a specific narrow area of specialization. Such software simulates the reasoning processes of experts in certain well-defined areas, such as medical diagnosis, financial forecasting, etc. So we expect many systems or devices to come up that will be behaving and functioning like experts themselves, because they will have what we are calling the expert systems. These devices that will be making use of this software will be able to emulate the knowledge of human experts skilled in a particular line, the knowledge of human experts, and this knowledge will then be used as consultant in a particular field. Number two is natural language processing, NLP. This is the ability of a computer to understand human language and translate it into instructions upon which the computer can understand. The goal of natural language processing is to create computer systems that recognize, understand, and process written and spoken language. Natural language processing can include voice recognition and voice synthesis systems. So in other words, we are going to have your natural language, your real mother tongue. You speak to this machine using your language and the machine will be able to respond accordingly because it will be able to understand what you are saying. Number three is computer vision. This is a technology which allows computers to receive visual input, then derive meaning from it and take action or making decisions based on that data. This enables computers to inspect the products and the processes for nearly imperceptible or imperceptible differences and imperfections, thus enhancing. In other words, these devices will be able to recognize an image. They'll be able to recognize products. They'll be able to recognize items and be able to tell whether those items are genuine or not. In other words, these devices or the computers that will be implementing this technology will be able to capture any input in the form of an image. If you stand, for example, in front of this computer and you, for example, give it a sign, it will be able to capture that image. It will also be able to compare what has been displayed to it or what has been put in front of it with what is stored in it. In other words, it will be able to tell, for example, if a product is genuine or not. So these devices will be, in quotes, seeing and interpreting what they are able to see. Such computers will be able to process and interpret light waves just as the human brain does. So in the same way that you see a person and then your brain is able to find out the names that are stored for such an image, and it is able to tell that this is what the soul. That is exactly how these computers will be behaving. They'll be able to capture an image and tell what it is. Such a system is going to be using scanning devices to sense and interpret objects. It will allow a computer to see as a human do, read and interpret text in almost any format. Number four, is artificial neural networks. This is the use of electronic devices and software to emulate the neurological structure 
of the human brain. The idea is to try and emulate the cognitive learning process of the human brain and how it recognizes patterns. Number five are robots or robotics. A robot is a computer controlled device that emulates a human being in carrying out the tasks that would otherwise be dangerous and difficult. Therefore, in the future, and this of course has already started happening, most operations or tasks will be being executed through the use of robots and research is continuously in progress to come up with varied robots that will incorporate perception systems. Number three is application of fiber optic technology. Fiber optics is the technique of transmitting light through transparent, flexible fibers of glass or of plastic. The uses of optical fibers are numerous. In medicine, for example, end work inside the body through tiny incisions without having to perform any surgery. They are used as endoscopes, instruments for viewing the interior of whole organs in the body. They can also be used for insertion into blood vessels to give a quick, accurate analysis of blood chemistry. So with this technology, the doctors and medics will not even require to perform any physical surgery because with this technology, they'll be able to scan and check the body to see whatever that is affecting it from the inside. And this is just one application of the fiber optics. Number four is Bluetooth technology. This is a wireless technology standard for exchanging data over short distances using personal area networks, what we call PANS. Bluetooth is a standard wire replacement communications protocol primarily designed for low power consumption with a short range based on low cost transceiver microchips in each device. Of course, this technology is already taking place, but as we progress in the future, this technology will be adapted by more and more and many devices will be making use of this technology. Number five is Wi-Fi technology. Wi-Fi or wireless fidelity is a local area wireless technology that allows an electronic device to exchange data or connect to the internet. Already, this technology is being implemented, but as we move on to the future, more and more devices, more and more people, and many devices, including television sets and others, will be having this facility for allowing connectivity through the air, and more so sharing information or receiving information from other devices, for example, from the internet. Number six is VoIP over Wi-Fi networks or wireless local area networks, that is VOWLAN. Voice over IP, that is VoIP, voice over internet protocol, is a methodology and a group of technologies for the delivery of voice communications and multimedia sessions over internet protocol, that is voice over internet protocol or voice over wireless local area networks. That's what VOWLAN stands for. And therefore, as we move on to the future, many devices will be having, or this technology of voice over the internet will be adopted, adapted and applied by many people in a way that voice will be able to be sent through the internet. That is VoIP is a methodology and a group of technologies for the delivery of voice communications and the multimedia sessions of an internet protocol, that is internet protocol networks, such as the internet. When I talk about multimedia, my dear students and the rest of the learners, I am saying that this technology will allow people to share sessions or exchange information that integrates voice images, and even the text together from one source or from one person to another over the internet. It utilizes existing broadband internet access, or it will be utilizing the subscriber's place and receive telephone calls 
in much the same manner as they would via the public switched telephone network. Number seven is satellite technologies. A satellite is a microwave drill station that receives a microwave signal from a transmitter, amplifies it, and retransmits it to a receiver. Very small aperture terminal, VSAT, is a technology that is being used in microwave transmission. In fact, currently, the number of satellites that are owned by individuals or organizations or car, we expect to see more of the satellite technologies being adopted and applied because they will also be more affordable. It is a very small satellite dish. That is, VSAT is a very small satellite dish used both in data, radio, and TV communication. This technology enables direct access to satellite communication instead of having to go through the state owned. Number eight is biometric technologies. This is a technology that identifies an individual based on his or her physical or behavioral traits for added security. They use who you are to identify you because your personal traits are extremely difficult to lose or forget. Biometric as physiological versus behavioral characteristics. With this technology, we expect that even the computers, instead of making use of passwords, they will be able to apply this technology where the computer will identify you based on your physical characteristics instead of typing a character or using passwords or instead of using pins. That is personal identification numbers. Number nine is information and service. This is an approach to evolve the internet infrastructure away from a host-centric paradigm based on perpetual connectivity and the end-to-end -end principle to a network architecture in which the focal point is named information, content, or data. Data becomes independent from location, application, storage, and the means of transportation and replication. Number 10 is DNA computing technology. This is developing computers that use DNA to process information. So DNA might one day be integrated into a computer chip to create a so-called biochip that will push computers even faster. This combination of computer science and biology could lead the way to the next generation of computers. Number 11 is ubiquitous computing, or if you like, you can say, or you can pronounce it as ubiquitous computing. In the future, computers will become so small and pervasive that they will be practically in everything. They will make use of computer programs that can recognize your voice or track your eye movements to execute the commands. So this means you'll be wearing a computer. Your clothes will contain computers. Your specs will be containing computers. So these computers will be integrated in almost everything. The networking system will allow your program applications to follow you wherever you go. Number 12 is spatial computing. This is a technology that will enable the users to interact with the digital elements in the digital space through visual and augmented reality in an intertwined fashion with the real world, such as speaking commands to achieve real world goals as you move throughout the world. Number 13 is touch screen user interfaces. In the future, most devices will be operated by the users touching the device's screen instead of making use of keyboards or keypads or even mouse. Touch screen enables the user to directly interact with what is displayed and also removes any intermediate handheld device like the mouse. Touch screen capability is utilized in smartphones, tablet, information kiosk, and other information appliances. So in that influence, we are saying that the future devices will not require you to press keys or buttons. You just need to touch it. You don't require keyboards even to operate computers. There will be no more keyboards. There will be no more mice. You just need to be, or you just be using your finger to touch on the screen. Number 14 is brain computer interfaces. 
As the power of modern computers grow alongside our understanding of the human brain, we move ever closer to making some pretty spectacular science. Neurologists are working on various brain computer interfaces that will allow people to manipulate computers only using their thoughts, thus reacting seamlessly with our desires. You'll just be looking at a computer with your eyes. And if you think of, for example, printing a document, it will pick that document and do the printing without you performing any other task. The devices will therefore be being controlled by thoughts. You just think of something, the computer does it. You just look at it, it functions. It does what you want or what you are thinking. 15 is electronic funds transfer. This is making use of computers to make payments and perform other financial related tasks electronically through the electronic funds transfer systems instead of handling any physical monies. This is the process of switching money from one account to another using a telecommunication facility. So as you move towards the future, we are going our countries and going to do away with the physical monies. And all transactions, buying and selling, each transaction, each business transaction will be executed online through electronic funds transfer. And therefore, you will not be required to carry any cash with you. This trend is to link up bank branches, usually with the customers, so that electronic funds transfer can happen fully. Therefore, in the future, you will not make use of any physical cash payments for goods and services, but it will be being done electronically. Number 16 is mobile computing or a mobile application. This is making use of smartphones or tablets or other mobile devices to freely download the programs from the internet that can be used to perform various activities just in the same way that you would have done the same thing physically. So in this case, most organizations are embracing the smartphones to bring their services closer to the people. You just need to use your smartphone to visit, for example, or to start a certain application for a certain organization at a platform just using your smartphone. And that is what we are calling mobile computing. And this is expected to be embraced more as you move on to the future. Number 17 is big data analytics. This is a tool that entails a combination of statistics, computer programming, and operations research to examine voluminous amounts of data and identify correlations, insights, and hidden patterns within a very short period of time, thus leading to improved data processing, enhanced securitization's overall digital agility. It enables organizations, or it will enable organizations to process their information in a better manner than enabling them to have a clear understanding or thus enabling them to have a clear understanding of what they are required to do and the areas that they need to be improved in readiness for the future. Number 18 is blockchain. This is an information system composed of a distributed peer-to-peer -peer digital ledger that provides an immutable time sequenced record of all transactions. The activities carried out are likely visible with the high potential for business applications and it holds the promise for a transparent. It enables organizations to have a better record management, thus enabling it to get a snapshot of any record from its origin. It does not require trust between parties and facilities and facilitates electronic smart contracts and is used to track digital assets whose ownership can be verified digitally and it hinges on strong cryptography that validates and chains together blocks of transactions, thus making it nearly impossible to tamper with any individual transaction record without it being detected. Number 19 is cybersecurity mesh. This is a distributed approach to cybersecurity that allows companies to create security measures based on the identity of a device rather than its proximity, scalability across distributed workforce. Number 20 is digital services. Just as you have already started to notice, 
as technology continues to evolve, most services that are initially or that are currently being offered face to face, such as health services, educational services, and other government services or private services, will start being um, offered or administered electronically through computers, smartphones, and other electronic gadgets without the need for any physical interactions. Number 21 is edge computing. This is a technology that allows computing devices to be decentralized so that they can be located closer to the primary sources of data, repositories, and the consumers of the information. This will lead to a reduction of latency between data submission and the feedback reception, thus allowing for more effective and real-time data consumption. Number 22 is Internet of Behaviors, IOB. This is a technology decision based on analysis of their consumers' behavior, thus gaining insight into how those consumers participate in the purchasing journey. Number 23 is low code technology. This will make it very easy for novice programmers that do not possess a high technical knowledge on the programming to develop software through just drag and drop interface, thus allowing users to solve various challenges without the need to engage expert programmers and users will be able to develop apps without even having gone to school to learn a lot of coding or expert coding in relation to programming. Number 24 is quantum computing. This is a technology that enables predictive analysis of enormous data through the application of superposition and entanglement principles, thus allowing computers to process information on an exponential scale and provide the users with viable solutions. It is the process of conducting complex equations and the processes in order to perform complex tasks with absolute ease. Number 25 is Robotic Process Automation, RPA. This is a technology that enables tasks to be automated using bots to accomplish many computer-based tasks. Number 26 is machine learning. This technology will enable machines to be able to watch and respond as requested through accurate speech recognition. Number two, they'll be able to expand. Number three, it will enable the machines to possess better than human computer vision. Number four, it will bring about holistic systems like self-driving cars and self-guiding drones. Number five, it will lead to more newly improved purchase recommendation systems, customer credit rating, and epidemic outbreak prediction. Number 27 is smart technology. This is a technology that allows users to remotely, or that will allow users to remotely monitor access and control their home devices even well away from them and even well away from home through the use of smartphones, mobile applications, and other networked devices. This will allow one to remotely control lights, entertainment devices, locks, alarms, climate within the house, etc. This will lead to an improved home security, accessibility, as well as improving one's comfort levels. Number 28 is cloud computing or migration. This is an internet-based computing in which large groups of remote servers are networked to allow the centralized data storage and online access to computer services or resources. This technology that allows individuals and organizes organizations or this technology allows individuals and organizations to keep all their digital information and resources in an organized manner in locations on servers away from their businesses or organizations premises, thus improving data security and optimizing one's efficiency in the digital space.
It is generally the utilization of software and hardware that is not physically located where you are, but just as a service of a network. As a result, you just need to have a terminal to connect you to the network or internet through which you can be able to access the hardware and software that you need without having installed them in your physical computer room or without having installed them in your computer. This technology allows you to store your information in locations or servers located away from your organization and lets you access and use it just as if it is physically installed or located just where you are. The cloud computing services are normally offered by third parties who offer their services to their customers on a pay per use basis. With the cloud computing, multiple users can access a single server to retrieve and update their data without purchasing licenses for different applications. The goal of cloud computing is to allow users to take benefits from all of these technologies without the need for deep knowledge about them or expertise with each one of them. Having looked at those 28 emerging trends in ICT, then arises the question concerning the challenges of these emerging trends. So what are the main challenges of emerging trends in ICT and of course affecting ethics? Some of the challenges include, number one, information privacy and security. As technology evolves, people are also developing sophisticated methods of intruding into information that is being transmitted between businesses or organizations. This has led to leakage of information that has led into organizations losing markets due to competitions, loss of huge sums of money due to internet frauds, and loss of data during transmission. Number two is electronic theft. People have developed the software to siphon money from bank accounts electronically. So, even though the computerization of business transactions has been taken seriously by organizations, there is a great problem to one's safety of finances being transacted electronically. And that's why organizations need to put up stringent measures to ensure that their electronic information remains secure, like by using encryptions and audit trail systems. Number three, is immature tools for authentication and privacy, thus making data and networks to be vulnerable. Valuable assets such as data and infrastructure could be lost or corrupted. Intellectual integrity could be compromised. If tools depend on restricted encryption technology, barriers to free protected exchange of information could emerge. Number four is lack of uniformity in encryption technology. Due to the inconsistencies on encryption from one country to another, digital identification, authentication, and the privacy safeguards might remain inconsistent from country to country, thus limiting information commerce. Number four, five is emergence of computer viruses. These are illegal programs that may interfere with the files stored electronically, thus making an organization lose all of its documents. Therefore, in as much as an office needs to store its files electronically, backups must be performed regularly and stored away from the main computer that contains the data so as to ensure that such vital information is not lost at the expense or courtesy of computer viruses. Number six is time wastage online. Many employees are wasting a lot of their office time while chatting and browsing the social sites in the internet that add no value to the business. In this case, the management should put up measures to curb this time wastage and also make positive use of social media 
like in advertising the business and its operations for organizational efficiency. Number seven is making a decision on the choice of technology. Due to rapid advancement of new technologies, individuals and organizations have a challenge on choosing technology that will work to the best interest of advancing the individuals or organization's objectives and which is better to avoid for the time being. Number eight is lack of adequate and structured data analytics. Due to advancement in technology, there is a very high growth of unstructured data within a very short time in an organization, thus being unable to reveal more important information interrelationships for the purposes of prompt decision making. Unstructured data is the data which varies in its formats including plain text, email, blog, formatted document, standard and non-standard image, video, voice, animation, sensor input, and web search logs. Number nine is inability by management to maintain control on the use of user-owned ICT devices. Due to the advent of smartphones and tablets, the users now bring in their own devices into the, into the workplace with or without management knowledge, and they use them for personal or for body personal and work related tasks. Therefore, when users bring their own devices, they also bring with them their own applications that they have been using, and thus the management find it a challenge to secure their network infrastructure and organization's data. Number 10 is inadequate ICT literacy. Due to rapid advancement in ICT, many people's skills are getting outdated very fast, thus rendering them almost irrelevant for the current technologies. This has resulted to many having a negative attitude towards the application of technology in execution of their tasks. Number 11 is internet congestion. Due to the internet becoming a repository for enormous amounts of data and information, it has become a great challenge for one to differentiate between accurate and wrong data. In addition, scientific activities are disrupted through lack of control of network capacity, high bandwidth applications are impeded or blocked, and urgent communications are slowed. Number 12 is loss of data in storage mediums. Due to the rapid emergence of new technologies, users may be overtaken in converting their data that is stored in a certain electronic storage media to another more recent and new electronic device. As a result, they end up losing the data that they had stored in the outdated storage media and are also not able to recover it because the current devices, for example, the modern computers do not have provision to allow for such conversions. Other than the challenges that emanate from the emerging trends, we also have opportunities so which are the main opportunities of emerging trends in ICT and of course also in ethics? Number one is creation of new jobs. The emergence or the emerging trends in ICT have led to advancement and the development of new hardware and software. As a result, this has led to creation of new jobs in the field of ICT requiring trained personnel to handle these emerging technologies thus helping increase the number of people that are joining the labor market and reducing the level of unemployment in the society. Number two, many can now afford a powerful computer. The rapid improvements in technology have led to ever greater computational speed, communication bandwidth, and storage capacity at the costs which reach or within the reach of even small scale users. This has also led to a decrease in the cost of computing, communications, 
owning and operating increasingly powerful computers. Number three is that people can now assimilate computers into their modern daily lives. The availability of information technology products with ever increasing computing, communication, and the storage capability has contributed to the adequacious assimilation of computers into modern daily life and the complex applications taking advantage of continually improving computer performance have emerged. Number four is there is commencement of new business ventures. Among other uses, information technology is being applied increasingly to product development, manufacturing, and distribution, as well as to new financial services, such as debit or credit transactions and investment portfolio management. Number five is technology leapfrogging. The longer you take before purchasing a new ICT device, the higher the chances that you will be able to acquire a better and a cheaper device than those that have gone ahead of you. Therefore, late entrance to the use of information technology can now enjoy the immediate advantage of low-cost systems without having had to make any investments in more expensive and less capable technologies and then carry the burden of dep depreciation of that investment. Number six, we have enhanced capabilities for collecting scientific data. The collection power of their instruments or organizational instruments enables many scientific enterprises, such as the Human Genome Project, climate modeling, and the satellite remote sensing studies to generate very large volumes of data. Number seven is increasing exploitation of broadband networks and emerging dominance of the video data type in the networks. Number eight is the investment in fiber optic cable is increasingly being exploited to support demanding new applications with high capacity or real-time delivery requirements for video, medical imaging, large-scale science, ETC, Number nine, there is substantial investment in the entertainment industry and new applications such as video teleconferencing, movies on demand, and interactive television, leading to the development of networks for voice communication, which will require a minor share of telecommunications capacity. Number 10 is advent of digital wireless communications. Wireless networks are rapidly connecting the world in new ways and at low cost. Number 11 is ground-based wireless systems are creating modern infrastructure in cities that have had unreliable phone systems with an inadequate capacity. Proposed satellite ventures will provide data and voice connections on a global basis. Number 11 is shifting dominance in data networks from primarily science or defense to commercial versus entertainment applications. Recent changes such as the advent of the worldwide browsers or worldwide web browsers have transformed the internet into a tool for a vast array of both commercial and non-commercial applications. Number 12 is increasing facility in collaborative work. Teams of scientists or teams of scientists that are remote from each other are now able to work together and you'll be able even to work together more on a project facilitated by high performance communication for active real-time interaction with each other using data and other information resources. Number 13 is increased capabilities for language processing. Machines using natural language processing techniques are helping to organize the vast amount of information available in electronic form. New tools are providing transparent access for speakers of the world's major languages. Number 14 is increasing recognition of the importance of standards. 
Tandans provides the means for interoperability and help to support competition and product evolution. Standards provide the means for interoperability and help to support competition and product evolution. Recognition of the role of standards has grown, further accelerating the acceptance and applications of standards. Number 15 is growing acceptance of a need for cooperation in monitoring and controlling network activity. Mechanisms have been built into authentication systems, retrieval systems, and networks to account for specific activities of users and to support flexible billing systems. Public key and encryption technology is increasingly accepted as a means to protect data and authenticate users. This activity is being driven primarily by the needs of commercial users of the network. Lastly, let's look at how we can cope with the challenges of emerging trends in ICT. To cope with new ICT technologies and make the most of any new technology, an ICT manager needs a solid understanding of the organization and the challenges its users and markets face. Before jumping into a new trend in technology, the ICT manager must do the following. Number one, find out how the new technology will help the organization address the current challenges. Number two, ensure that new applications are built using an open architecture that lets them run on any platform or with any database, thus allowing the organization's applications to run on the in-house servers, an in-house cloud, or in an external cloud. Number three, is introduce new data analytics that will be able to cope with the variable nature of big data. New analytics offer methods to process the variety. Data is generated in real time and the demands call for usable information to be ready as needed. So solutions like 100 GB Ethernet, parallel processing, and solid state drives offer good response times. Number four, is control organizations' data access so as to be able to maintain control of personal ICT devices that are brought into the organization by individuals without knowledge of the ICT managers. This can be done by securing the data on servers, then providing the users access to that data in the form of mobile web applications. This lets them access the data on any server they are authorized to access but doesn't store any data on the mobile device. Number five is to always train the users on how to make use of technology even before it is introduced. Equipping the staff with the skills required to operate a device and according them the support that they may require any time in relation to its use motivates the staff to embrace it and apply it for the intended purpose and in the intended manner. Number six is developing applications that adjust to the devices that users have. This helps the organization avoid acquiring new applications whenever new devices change. This also enables the organization to continue using their old devices because the application can still be compatible with them. With that, we have come to the end of this topic on emerging trends in ICT. Congratulations for learning about the emerging trends in ICT. For more videos in various computer and ICT topics, kindly visit MLSWAP ICT YouTube channel. In addition, to be able to acquire various life skills, as well as access various motivational and inspirational videos, visit MLSWAP Motivation YouTube channel. You can also kindly click on subscribe button and hit the notification bell for both channels if you have not already done so, so as to receive immediate updates once any new resource is added at any time. In case you have any questions, suggestions, or recommendations, or for any other further correspondence, kindly write it to us through the email mlswap at gmail.com. 
Thank you very much for listening to me and God bless.